There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Robert W. Service. I must have been around seven or eight years old when my mother gave me a book with the story of Sam McGee hidden within its pages. It was an anthology of Canadian poets, and I was far from thrilled to receive it. I was at a crucial stage in my life. I'd started becoming a pretty good hockey player, I was learning that sometimes what I said made people laugh, and I was starting to be known as a pretty cool guy. My mom's gift was a problem. Being seen with a book of Canadian poems was going to quickly do away with anyone's notion that I was a pretty cool guy. On the other hand, I was eight, and I didn't want to hurt my mom's feelings. After all, she is the one who made me read The Hobbit when I was six, and then got me the whole set of Narnia books, which went great with my Hardy Boys and Bobsy Twins books. So maybe, just maybe, this book might be great too. I didn't find Sam McGee right away. No, that would have been too easy. Instead, I had to struggle through some boring and pretty lame poems about birds and leaves and such. I wasn't sure I was going to find anything in the great big book of girly stuff to keep me entertained. Luckily, I didn't give up, and I stumbled upon the Robert Service poem stashed in the middle of the book. The Cremation of Sam McGee is a story about two men who travel to the Yukon for the Klondike Gold Rush in the 1890s. The narrator is a tough guy who seems to be able to deal with the soul-numbing cold of the Canadian North with relative ease and grace, but his buddy Sam is completely different. Sam doesn't stop whining for the entire trek, just moping and complaining about how cold it is and whatnot, and just generally being a pain in the neck. Eventually, Sam decides he's probably going to die, because, let's face it, he's a drama queen. So, he decides he's going to die, and he asks the narrator to cremate him when he does, because, and I quote, Taint being dead, it's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. Yeah, he's afraid of his corpse being cold. Now, I've lived in some pretty cold places in my life, and sure, they can be difficult to cope with, but never, not once, did I think that I would be cold after I died. That's ridiculous. Let's think about this logically. Let's say your dead body can still be cold and bothersome after you die. Then, let's say you cremate it to keep it warm. At best, you're going to be warm for a day. And then the ashes are still going to be there, and then they will be cold. So anyway, the narrator agrees, and sure enough, Sam dies, so the narrator finds an old abandoned ship and throws Sam into the furnace, and burns him up, and as he sits there getting warm, he starts to get curious. He wonders what Sam's body will look like all burnt up. So our narrator, he opens the door to the furnace. And there's Sam, cheery and smiley and having the time of his life. He even goes as far as to ask the narrator to close the door because he's letting in the cold. That's pretty awesome. I enjoy that story as much today as I did when I was eight. Even more so now because I get to read it to my daughter and I get to make the voices and things. I mention this poem because while I was researching the Canadian Club Hide a Case Adventure, I came across an ad for a case hidden in the Yukon. The ad tells you to follow the trail that the gold miners followed in the 1890s until you get to Dawson City in the Yukon which is what made me think of old Sam McGee. He had a terribly hard time of it when he tried it, and I mean seriously, he died. I figure there must be an easier way to do the same trail to get to the hidden case but still be comfortable. I suppose you could do the actual trekking if you want, going through lakes and down rivers and rough terrain, but in my opinion, you might as well just go straight to Dawson. A plane ticket from Calgary is $292, so get to Calgary and then fly straight to Dawson. I think that's easier than trying to traverse terrain and lakes. But I have to admit, the adventure of doing the actual trail itself might be a blast too. However you do it, you need to end up in Dawson City. That's where the ad pretty much stops telling you anything. For real, the only thing it says from that point is that the case is hidden 32 miles southeast from Dawson. It also says that you'll need the wisdom of Solomon to find the case. Stumped? Well, I've gone ahead and done the work for you. 32 miles southeast of Dawson City is the mountain peak called Solomon's Dome. It's where the Solomon Mines are. So there you go. You're welcome. I doubt my own CC adventure will bring me to the Arctic Chill of Canada, but I'm sure, if I'm blessed enough to be picked, that wherever we end up, it will be amazing. And if it helps, drink Canadian Club whenever you drink socially, but never ever drink a drive.